It's October 25, 2001. The tech world is buzzing and rapidly expanding. The dot-com bubble has burst. Apple is making a comeback with the iPod and Microsoft. Well, they're about to drop something massive and revolutionary. That day, in New York City's Times Square, Microsoft officially releases Windows XP, Experience, as they called it. But it wasn't just another upgrade. It was a complete reinvention of how people would experience computers for the next decade or so. Before XP, using Windows could feel like flipping between two worlds. There was the serious, business-like Windows 2000, and the buggy, crash-prone Windows ME for home users. XP combined the experience of both, blending stability with style in one sleek package. And that startup sound? That gentle chime that greeted millions every morning, it became a digital lullaby of the early 2000s. Windows XP brought something that people had long been asking for, simplicity that actually worked. The start menu became more intuitive, taskbars were polished, the interface looked friendly, even cheerful, compared to the dull gray of the predecessor versions. Then there was the wallpaper, oh, that infamous wallpaper. Bliss, the lush green hill beneath a bright blue sky. Simple, peaceful, iconic. It wasn't CGI. It was actually an actual photograph captured in California by Charles O'Rear, and it would go on to become the most viewed photograph in history. But XP wasn't just beautiful, it was powerful at that time. It introduced new levels of security, faster startup times, and plug-and-play features that made connecting devices such as printers and cameras so much easier. Suddenly, the PC wasn't just for work, it was for life. Families shared one computer in the living room. Kids played pinball 3D. Teenagers burned CD. Internet cafes exploded all around the world. Windows XP became the backdrop of digital childhoods and first online experiences. Even years later, long after Microsoft tried to retire it, millions of people still refused to let it go. Hospitals, governments, and even ATMs kept running XP. It was that reliable. In a way, XP wasn't just an operating system, it was a time capsule of early 2000s positivity. A world just learning the potential of the internet and the digital world. So when you hear that familiar startup sound, or see that green hill, you're not just remembering an old desktop. You're remembering an era when technology still felt new, exciting, and full of promise. On October 25, 2001, Windows XP didn't just change our computers. It changed how we lived with them.